Okay, so this is what we were doing before on line one. And now Postgres has a feature called full text search or FTS. So what this basically does is allows, allows you to separate a piece of copy or a piece of content into breaks it up into words. And then you're able to search against individual words. So imagine it doing a breakpoint by white space and putting things into an array. And then you can search within that array. That's that's kind of the concept. And you can do it in line two. This is basically using full, using full text search. You use a function called two TS vector. So we're going to convert the column title into what Postgres calls a data type, a TS vector. Now, when you do that, there are multiple dictionaries that you can use. Simple is basically kind of like what you see is what you get translation. If something is Apple, it's going to be Apple. It's not going to find um, apples. It's not going to find different variations of that. Um, <clears throat> it's basically what you see is what you get. If it wasn't, doesn't have a like a breakpoint on white space, then it's it's not going to work. So this is whole word only. Right. Exact match thing. Right. Okay. Now, you can use for in our case an English dictionary, and that will actually give you variations. So it will find apple and apples, or there's a few different cases where it basically converts the words into simpler root words. But it won't find like applesauce. No, that's too that's too much of a difference. But there is a way to find applesauce, and I'll show you to in a little bit. <laughs> so, um, so basically, it's looking for whole words generally. Now, I, if you're searching through, if someone's doing a search through blog posts, maybe you'd want to use English. Um, but simple may be more appropriate, like if you're searching for names or you're going to have a mixed um, dealing with mixed languages. Like if you have international names, sometimes simple works better because the English dictionary may try to convert names strangely. Um, whereas a simple, it's, it's, it's simple. It's kind of what you see, what you get. So it depends on how you want to search, how you choose to convert your data. Now that's converting the source into this vector. And then you use the operator um, at at, which basically contains, and you basically build a query to against that vector. So you use the two TS query function, you give it the same dictionary because it's converting what your input is to see if that matches in the vector. And I'm just putting apple. I don't need percent size, anything like that. Now doing that, you could see, okay, it's still doing a parallel index scan. It's still using, it's using that index because it's available. Um, but you could see the execution time is worse, much worse. Good like, God. I'm, us I'm using full text search, but it's five times slower than when I'm not using full text search. Wait, we're going backwards here, dude. Exactly. Okay, there's got to so, be a better way. Exactly. That's what the next slide. <laughs> okay, good. Great. All right. So uh, the overhead of that is building that vector through all, because you're building it through every value in that, every row in that index, essentially. You're building that vector and then you're comparing it to what your query is. So what you want to do is you want to pre build the vector. Now, there's, I would say there's three ways to do that. The first way to do that is you can actually build an index, a function-based index that actually pre-converts to TS vector what you want. And that's part of the index that you build. So when you build the index, 
it'll have that TS vector built into it so you can do searching easily. The second way to do it is you can use triggers that build a separate column on the table. So basically you add another column and you make it a ded dedicated TS vector column and you have a trigger that whenever data is changed in the table, you're going to update that TS vector value so it stays up to date when the data changes. The third way is a new feature in more recent versions of Postgres where it kind of does a trigger build for you and it, it, they're called generated columns. So that's the, what I used here. So it's basically, I'm gonna add a new column. So I'm gonna alter table, the blog, add the column TSV title. Now this is what I called it because it's gonna be a TS vector. So I just said, it's gonna be a TS vector underscore title. So it's a TS vector version of the title and the data type is TS vector. And then the added magic to give you populating this column is generated always as, so it's basically generate the data in this column, and then you give the function that it's going to be generated with. So I'm converting the title using the simple dictionary into a TS vector. And you say store, because what that means, it's going to store that in this in this column. So, now, so basically we're turning this generated function into a real column. Yeah, yeah, it's a real column. I mean, as soon as I do alter table blog add column, I'm making the column. But what the generated always stuff afterwards does, essentially line one will create the column. Right. But line two actually says to the database system, keep this column up to date by any time data changes, take that title and convert it into a TS vector and store it here. So whereas on the last slide, this the TS vector thing was kind of a on the fly ad hoc. Yeah, converted. and it had to, and this. when it's gonna scan, yes, because when it has to scan the whole index, it has to convert, okay, I've got, I'm looking at this title, okay, I convert this whole thing to TS vector. Does it match? No, okay, go to this one. I gotta convert it to TS vector. You know, so that's why it was five times slow. It right. has to do that process for every row every time you run the query. But now we're taking that process and persisting it yes. for each record. Yes. Now, I have a little note there that says this does require a table rewrite. So it's basically going to be a long process if this is a large table. So just be aware. So, so don't do this on your trillion record table unless you've yes. got a day or two. Yes. Or you need to use a different technique um, to be able and I haven't actually thought through doing this on a gargantuan table, but it's basically, it's a process to be able to, to build this on, on the larger table. Okay, so that's the first part, just having it there, but you also need to create an index so it can be used efficiently. Now this type index type you're going to want to use 99% of the time probably is a gen index. You can also use something else called a gist um, so basically, no, let's this stick is with the gen, man. We bring in gen into it. It's all good now. Whew. Now we're having fun. So, so this is basically, they, they kind of call it an inverted index. So as opposed to indexing the values, what it does is it takes each word and that word is like the main part of the index and then it stores references to where it found that word. So basically this index will have something, an entry called Apple and next to it, it will have where all the different documents that found Apple. So that's why it can do these searches so quickly. It's built exactly like an index in a book. Because once you find Apple, you find all the entries to Apple. And that's different than how a B tree index is constructed. Okay, so added that in as a gen index, and now when we do our query, we don't have to do the TS vector business. We just say where TSV title, the one we built is equal to the TS, que TS query, you know, where we're looking for the simple dictionary for Apple. Now we have to match still what we're doing in the 
generated column that has to be the same thing. So it knows to use the index and can do matching. It, I think if you switch it to an English dictionary, for example, it's not going to work. Okay. So the dictionaries have to be consistent, which means in order to write this query, you have to know how the, the column was built. Yeah. Yeah. But that's pretty easy to do in Postgres. You can query the, you know, the data tables to understand what's going on. <laughs> Colin says he needs to take your SQL courses. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, and then look at the results of this. So now your execution time has gone from, what the heck was it in the last two point? Um, stupid and gross. Let's see. I think it was 2.5 seconds, maybe. 2.7. Yeah. So this is... Thousand, you know, so this is 10,000 10, times faster. Right. But still, and 200 compared, milliseconds for a query is still a little much, though. 200? It's not 200 milliseconds. It's 0. 0.2, 0. 2 milliseconds. milliseconds. <laughs> You're right. Right. I can't read. I guess that's so. better. <laughs> yeah, buddy. But we still okay. can't find applesauce, right? All right, we're going to get there. Okay. So, I want my applesauce with my gin. All righty. Okay. You can have it. All right. If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.